In the last episode, we completed building our BMS system. However, Mr. G insisted that we install a fuse. Let's find out what he meant next on The Conversion Garage. A fuse, a fuse is a predictable weak link. So wait, when we just blew up that wire, you said that that was like a fuse. It's exactly like this. So what, what, go, what is this? So that's just a wire going into a... Wait, there's nothing in there. Well, I'm gonna give it to you right now. It's almost like a car. They're called blade, they're called blade fuses. I've seen these before. They, yeah, yeah the these car. are in my car. Right? Right. And what you do is you pick out the one uh, relative to the amp size. So okay. let's see, this one's five. We're gonna go past that. We're gonna go to 15. Okay. Okay. And what that does is it'll protect, it'll be the one, it'll Thing be the, the weak link in the chain. Oh, and you can actually see it come up in there. That's the wire. Yeah, we could break one right now. How would we do that? Just loop it to a battery. Oh. All right, so I have a five amp fuse. I'm gonna pop in the five amp fuse. Okay, here. You brought, well, no, we, we want a big battery, right? No, 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 this will work. Wait, but this is so little. Even though it's little, when you do a dead short, a loop to a battery, you're asking it to deliver all of its energy all at once. Oh, okay. So you think that it's actually gonna break this five amp fuse? I think so, let's try it. Okay, let's take a look. Ready? Right, three, two, one. Oh, it, I yep, heard it. Saw it. It popped. Yep. That was awesome. All Whoa. right. Well, now what? Now this is broken. Okay, so what's nice about an inline fuse holder is that you could literally just pop that out. Just kind of wiggle it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we can pop in a new fuse just like in a car. Yeah, and let's say you don't think it's sized correctly. You could put a, here's a 7.5. Well, let's, uh, what are we doing for our... What are we doing for our Well, the motor mod? says it's rated at 15 amps. So let's so put a 15, let's put a 15, 15 in, there. in there. Here's your 15. Okay, pop that in there. Nice. Okay, cool. So now we're going to attach this along our route to get to the motor. Yeah, so you do the negative side. Okay. And then, uh, right, so then you do want a nice connection to the motor. So we're going to use Anderson connectors so we can disconnect. Any sort of disconnect will work. Okay. And then put your fuse in line. Okay, so we're going to attach this in line. Right. What do we need in order to get this motor working? Okay. We can just connect it, right? That will work. Not safe. Not safe. Why is that not safe? Okay, first of all, you need a switch to contain when the wires go together. They sometimes arc. So you need to switch with nice contacts. Oh, so we don't want it to be like every yeah. single time and starting it up. Right. So you, you actually brought one. Yep. Now this isn't just on off. Cause in fact, there's, there's four points here. There's two on this side and two on this side. So why did you bring such a complicated switch? Why don't we just use a light switch? Okay. So you can't just do on and off because you're doing a motor that's spinning a blade. Okay. Now, let's say you're mowing the lawn and something happens to you, you, uh, you, know, you pass out or whatever, or you gotta run away from it for a second or you lose it. When you let go of the switch, which mm -hmm. you're holding, okay, that means we have to stop that motor right away because we don't know whether it's falling down a hill. It's called a fail safe. I failed to operate it or hold it, but it's, but it's uh, not working. Actually, better would be a dead man switch. Okay, so, but, so if we were to use just a light switch, say, uh, the amps would work and the voltage would work. Yeah, so that it, would work. It would work, but the problem would be um, I could turn it on, walk away from it, right, and then who knows what would happen. Exactly. So, and if I were to shut it off, the blade would remain spinning with all of its uh, inertia. All of its inertia. So it's just going to keep going. Yes. Um, it'll slow down eventually, but probably not fast enough if there's some something bad that's happening. Almost like a chop saw. We want it to stop when we let go. Okay. So how do we do that? Okay. So you have what's called a momentary switch. Mm -hmm. So when you, you're holding it on, but you're letting go. But also there's one more feature to this. What it does when you let go is it actually loops the, the wires back to the motor which then shorts out the motor. So it'll actually work as a brake. It's almost like a Tesla regenerative braking, only we're not trying to capture the energy. We're trying to lock up the motor. So what you're saying is we're going to short circuit the motor. So the motor's spinning and then we short it and that stops it. Could we actually see this in action? Yeah. 
Let's grab the motor. Let's, I, I'm curious. Okay, so we got the motor and you have the two leads. And so right now I can spin the motor and it'll spin freely for like a second, right? Spin it fast. Good. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. So right now it spins nice and freely. So what happens when you short out the motor? Okay. So now I'm going to do this. Is it's now it's Whoa. harder to do it, right? You see how it's not spinning as much when I let go? Here, uh, turn it off. Long. Okay. Now put it on. Now it's on. So it really slows it down. So what? Let me feel it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's totally a difference. Oh, yeah. So it's like free spin. I mean, it's definitely hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's like trying to stop. Okay, so just in case the hand turning wasn't enough, we're actually going to have it turn itself. Yeah, now this is a 12 volt battery, so the speed will be very low. But then once I start it on there, I'm going to let it spin and let it just spin down. Okay. Then we're going to do it again and stop it. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. It's spinning. Okay. Now I'm going to let go. Okay. And it okay. took a couple seconds. Right. Wait, I'll go right to there. Ready? Wow. Spinning. Yeah. Locking. Okay. So that's going to create a safety and that's Locking. what this switch was. Spinning. <laughs> Locking, spinning, locking, spinning. I love this stuff. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> so we got negative flowing in and then we have positive flowing out. But when we're doing this, we're making the negative flow into the positive or vice versa. Yeah. And so that is what locks up the motor because you're actually running it backwards using its own energy. See, because every motor is a generator. Right. Okay. I think okay. that this really shows why we're implementing this switch yeah. as opposed to a light switch or any other kind of like dead man switch type scenarios. This actually will break the motor. Yeah. It's an elect it's electronic break. That's super cool. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna just like stick this in here and then stick this on there and then we're all set and ready to go. So we got to follow a wiring diagram. So I'll draw it out for you. Okay, so what's the, is this the wiring diagram right here? Yeah, actually it's got it written right on the side. Okay, but that doesn't really explain what we're gonna be connecting and where. Right, so you gotta think in terms of normally open, normally closed. And so closed means the circuit is connected. Okay, so why don't you draw this out for me because I don't get it. All right. All right, so there's two states that this switch is normally in, right? So one state is when I've clicked it on. I want the motor to go. I want it to run. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to put a negative terminal on the negative terminal of the motor and a positive terminal on the positive terminal terminal of the motor. Mm -hmm. And I want to run it through the switch, through yep. the switch. Then the second way is when I let go, either I am dead or well, it's a dead man switch. So yeah, you let go. I've let go for whatever reason. Yes. Okay. So we have a go and a stop function and that does two things because there are two switches in here. So draw me out the first one, which is the go function. So okay. I've clicked it on. Yeah. Okay. So you have your battery here. Okay. All right. So let's just do a little battery. One side's positive, one side's negative. Then you got your motor over here. Okay. Yep. And then we have our switch, right? Which has a gate through it. Right. So when this is closed. Yeah. So this would be, it would go straight across like that. Okay. Okay. And that's numbered, right? Yep. So that's numbered as one. And then we have uh, this is two, right? Yeah. Two, three, and four. Now okay. this one here is going to be in the open state. Gotcha. Okay. Like that. Uh, and we'll just do a, a, a positive negative here. Okay. Okay. So, so it went through here. Yeah. Okay. That'll just go here connected. Okay, and then positive was, is going to go straight. Like Looks that. Directly up to the motor? Yeah. Wow. There you go. So this is your switch right here. That's right there. Uh, now, wired in would be, but it's open, wired in would be the negative hooked up directly to there, and then one of the positives hooked up directly to here. Okay. So if this closes and this opens, which will be the opposite here, it'll lock up the motor. Let's and it'll disconnect the motor from the battery. Yeah. Same. So if we draw this again, we're drawing literally the exact same diagram again. The only difference being the switches are different. So right here, it's this. Mm -hmm. Down yep. here, it'll be that. So let's yeah. do that. Okay. So I'll draw it exactly the same. Positive, 
negative uh, motor, positive, negative, and then uh, we got our switch right here, boop, 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 but this time gate will be open, which means no connection. This is number one, this is number two, three, and four. Oh, my three is all messed up. And then boop, a doo, and connected. And oh, the four is over there. That's okay. All right, so negative two here. Mm -hmm. And then this one goes to negative. Yeah. There. And then our positives sneak around the back side. Then we do the, uh, mm -hmm. now we do three. We just go like this. And then this one here, I'll just do a little nice curvy. Nice. And that's it. All right, so just to kind of show the circuit here. So starting out at the negative terminal, we come around. We can go through right here. We go through the motor. Then we come down. We come around and up to the positive. And there's no way to, to cut through there. So that's making the motor move. Here we come up, we come around, and we stop. There's no way to go. But we have this other circuit here. This motor is actually producing electricity, mm -hmm. like a battery almost, mm -hmm. except it's a generator. Mm -hmm. So this energy is coming around, and it can go to the positive of the battery. It doesn't matter. It's not a connected circuit, mm -hmm. but it's coming up here, going across three and four, and back into itself, which where it is going to make it slow down. Yeah. Cool. That's it. You got it. All right. Let's wire this guy up. So All what right. do we need in order to do this? So we have our diagram. Luckily, we actually drew it out so we don't forget what it looks like. So we have our positive and negatives from the battery. This is the negative, even though we have a red yeah. wire because it's going through our fuse. Let's figure this out. So we've got our one, two, three, and four. All right, so we have our negative and we have our positive coming from the battery. Mm -hmm. um, and these are both going to be ending oh, up coming in it. here. Yeah, I mean, let's do it, right? We're doing it. So just to simplify, we connect it. We have a separate thing. Same thing as this, but it's this. Hang on a second. Ready? Yeah. This is hooked up to our battery pack. It's going to go. Oh! Wow! It is stopped immediately. It was like that. Yes. Okay. Let's Dude. Again. Yeah. Whoa! Wow. Yeah. It stops. In That's like, amazing. It stops in like one rotation. Now there's not a lot of inertia on True. this right so now. True. So it'll have a blade. You do have this, which is which is pretty. You know what? We don't need to put the blade on it right yeah. now. That was awesome. But this works. It totally works. All right. So are we gonna wire up this one? Uh, or are we, we can, wire up this thing? or we could just let's wire up this. Here we go. Let's do it. Yeah. What are you doing, Jess? I'm gonna use a torch to solder stuff. Got a little, a little hot. Oh wow, it's still melting? Yeah, it's hot. Here, let go. All right. All right. So we got ourselves uh, Anderson connectored up. So our battery is on this side, our motor and, uh, you know, fuse. we got a ton of fuses and all sorts of stuff on that side. We're ready to rock and roll. You connect them together. <laughs> nice. All right, so that's in. Oh, all right, we ready? Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, and it Wait a minute, stops. and it tells you the battery. Yeah? Oh! All right, so this means that our motor is ready to go. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we continue our adventures on the Conversion Garage.